Hey guys, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. This video is going to be about pouring a pool deck. Now we get asked to do a lot of these pool decks every year. Seems like in Maine there's a lot of people that install pools. Let me know down in the comments how many of you guys do pool decks like this. So we're going we're gonna to get this formed up. I came here with Tia today to get it formed up and get it ready to go so we can get it poured the next day. Now we're going to make two of the sides about four feet wide. And that four feet is going to run down a little bit on that third side. And then the, the very back where that yellow wheelbarrow is and to the left where the stairs are, that's going to be around six feet wide over there. So the first thing I do is I just get my forms laid out and I get my lengths all screwed together. And, you know, the way I figure my lengths is if the pool's 36 by 18 and I know I have four feet of deck on one side, six feet on the other, that adds another 10 feet. So I'll need f at least 46 feet on that, that right side. And then over here, I got the 18 foot wide part of the pool. So I got four feet of deck on the right, four feet of deck on the left. So there's about 26 feet of length I need there. So that's basically how I go about going around the pool. And then to get my four feet, I just measure off that, that white coping on the pool and I measure four feet off each side put my pins in, run my strings, get all my corners screwed together. And then the last thing I need to do to really set the forms is set them to grade. So I'll use my laser and I'll shoot the top of that coping on the pool, that white coping around the pool. And that's top of concrete up next to the pool. And I want to make sure my form is a little bit lower than that. So in about four feet, you know, we'll drop it about a half inch in four feet. And that's what I use the laser for to go around and make that process pretty quick. So we're just going to get the wire mesh put in here. We're going to be using a 4000 PSI concrete with fiber mesh. It's an exterior mix, so it has air entrainment in it. And we also put the wire mesh in here too, so it's got two types of reinforcement in it. We've had really good luck with that in Maine, especially when there's a good gravel base. You know, or a sandy base like this one has, it's, uh, the frost really doesn't seem to want to play with them much at all. So here we are pouring the concrete. Now we had to use a power buggy because the pool was out back of the house quite a ways. So we had two options, really. We could power buggy it like this or we could pump it. Now it cost about 100 bucks to get a power buggy. And it cost about 900 bucks to get a pump. So... You know, power bugging it really wasn't that bad because it wasn't a huge deck. If it would have been bigger, like 8, 10, 12 feet wide around this thing, we probably would have, you know, got a pump because it just would have been a lot faster. But where this was just one load of concrete, here we are with a little different angle on that first dump. Where This was just one load of concrete. You know, it took us about 45 minutes to an hour to to get it all dumped out using this power buggy. So it really wasn't too bad. Plus, as you can see, we're kind of in the shade here to start with early in the morning. So that, that made things a little bit easier too. The access, you know, when you use a power buggy like this, those things aren't great in soft sand and stuff. So it's gotta be hard packed dirt you're, wheel, you're uh, running that thing on. And obviously you gotta have access all the way around the pool, which the homeowner gave us really good access for this. So that made it a lot easier using this power buggy here today also. Now everybody's got a job here. You know, Darren's got the stand-up screed. Luke's kind of breaking down the concrete as I dump it out with the power buggy. Tia's kind of helping Darren puddling. She's magging edges. Um, so that's another thing that the teamwork here makes this job go really, really easy. So kind of lucky to have... A bunch of people that really enjoy what they're doing enjoy working together and they all know their role they all know their job like I don't have to tell them anything do you have you guys that do concrete do you have employees like that too that just you show up they show up they know what to do they, they know what to expect and and they just get it done I mean let me know down in the comments that that makes life a lot easier when you go to work each day Darren's using the stand-up screed for most of this. That we made just made that. It's just a bow float handle into a piece of one by uh, lumber, and it just works. It's kind of handy for smaller stuff like this. We don't use it on big floors or anything like that, but 
for small stuff when the forms are right to grade it just helps uh, on bending over you don't have to bend over quite so much when you screed like he's doing right here he wanted to use the the magnesium screed when he's going around those railings and you can see how he's screeding around that he's just kind of kicking in his feet his footprints as he's screeding there that's the way we typically screed concrete either kick screeding like that or if it's a big floor or something flat you've seen in some of my other videos we'll use a power screed for those of you guys if this is your first time watching me you know this is what we do every day we pour concrete every day some type of flat work if you like that kind of stuff you know please go go ahead down there and hit subscribe now I come up with a couple videos a week just trying to teach and educate as many people as I can about how to pour concrete that's what I like doing and if you like that kind of stuff, then hit that subscribe button. Now we've moved around to the back of the pool. This section's four feet wide. I actually, it, it's actually a little more difficult to dump with that power buggy because that power buggy holds quite a bit of concrete, and we didn't want to, you know, make a mess when we're dumping it. So we had to dump it pretty slow. Just a little bit at a time. Then I'd have to set over and dump out the rest of the. The buggy there that buggy holds a lot of concrete that makes it makes it actually pretty fast a lot better than wheeling it by hand I own four wheelbarrows actually but we we hate wheelbarrow and concrete so I threw my back out once wheeling just trying to stop that thing from tipping over and I said that's probably gonna be the last time I wheelbarrow concrete so now we'll, we'll either use a power buggy we'll tailgate it or we we'll use a pump truck Darren's doing the screeding, he's doing the bow floating, finishing his magging. You know, we're on a, you know, we want to be quick doing this. We're not really rushing or hurrying, but we want to be quick because we know it's pretty warm out today. We know that concrete's going to be setting up and we got quite a bit of handwork coming up to finish this. So that'll be coming right up too at the end of the video. So make sure you hang out for that. You know, we got to cut grooves in, we got to edge it, we got to mag the whole thing out, we got to broom it. So there's quite a bit of finishing to do on these and you just want to make sure you get back on it in time you don't want to be late finishing something like this if you're late then your broom marks aren't going to come out very nice and you're really going to be working a lot harder than you should be so we've got it we're almost we're on to that last side now getting down to that last corner for pouring and then you know we're going to get the tools washed up and then we're jumping right back here starting to finish i'm cutting grooves in with the, the walk behind groove to start with and we just we lay out you know quite a few grooves in this thing and the grooves are there for a couple reasons number one is we want to try to get the concrete if it's going to crack we want it to crack in the groove so it kind of hides it now there's no guarantee in that as most of you know with concrete concrete cracks but we are trying to control those cracks with these grooves and then the grooves also aesthetically give it a you know a nice look to the whole pool as as you get finished up now Darren's going around he's cutting in the edges in with the edger as I got down to my last grooves it got a little firm to do with the, with the walk behind groover so now I'm just going to cut them in by hand it, it was still pretty easy to cut it in by hand Traditionally, this is how I, I was taught to cut grooves right here with a screed and a little hand groover. It is pretty easy to learn that way, and it's pretty easy to cut grooves with a groover that way too. We call them grooves. A lot of people call them joints. They're basically the same thing, serve the same purpose, but that's as easy as it is right there. You can see how easy that one was. And just as soon as we got those joints cut in, you know, we're right back on it, mag floating it. Luke's cleaning up the joint, and then we're going to broom right over it. I'm checking that other end up there, as you can see. So we're kind of kind of mag floating this thing out both ways. It's starting to set up pretty good now. That other half over there to the right is in the sun. So we know we don't have a lot of time to waste here. We want to get it mag floated get it broomed out and just keep moving around this thing as it sets up it 
you can see it's set up pretty quick. If if Luke can get on there with those those knee boards and just work his way around and without sinking in, then the stuff's set up pretty quick. I'm way over there in the back in the sun, mag floating out that piece back there because it's basically all setting at the same time right now it's just right for us if we wait 5 10 15 minutes then we're going to start getting behind so we just want to keep keep working at it at the same pace now you can see way back there i just went and got some some knee boards like luke and i'm going to get on that and then darren can just jump back and forth with the broom we kind of mag out a square a square is like in between the joints from one joint to another so we'll get one square magged out Darren will get it broomed and then he'll jump over to where I am and, and broom that square that I got magged out before it dries up and then T is gonna follow behind with the edger and make sure she gets a really nice edger mark in it and then that'll be the finished process right there You want pretty good texture around a pool. You know what I've noticed? I have a pool and I have kids. And, you know, they're running, playing, throwing toys and stuff that around this pool. And you don't want them slipping because it does get wet and they get in and out of the pool quite a bit. So you want a pretty decent texture on it. I know mine, mine did. It's Mine's about 20 years old now, so the texture's starting to wear on it a little bit, but it's still it's still pretty nice, and it's not hard on the feet at all, and it's definitely it's definitely a non-slip type type texture. You don't want really anything smooth around a pool. You're going to get a lot of water on that deck. You can see now how Luke and I are kind of working towards each other in that piece in the sun. Darren's out there grabbing a mag. T is finishing up the edges. Once once it, something like this starts going, starts setting up, you, there's there's no time to stop for anything. Just gotta keep going till you get it done. I teach this stuff too, guys. You know, in more in more depth in the concrete underground. And the concrete underground is my private training area down and I have a link for that down in the description down where it says show more under the video you just click on that and then all my links show up for all the tools I use all my courses and all that so you can check that out if you want so we're coming down this side here this side on the right and then we have that one last side over there on the left over where the ladder is we got to finish up so we're going to jump right over there get that mag floated real quick and then get it broomed before it starts setting because some of that's in the sun over there you see i'm headed over there now luke's going to finish up that square there and then he's going to jump right over there so we are kind of hustling but we're not behind and that's the key I mean this is with four people so you, you kind of need to know what you're doing on these to may really make them come out right even though this isn't one of the the larger ones that we do it's probably it's probably a medium or to average size pool deck um, we've done them smaller for sure but we we do some larger every year too and those you know the larger ones you really want to you really want to make sure you know what you're doing or just get some extra help one or the other right now what I'm doing over there me and Luke is we're just making sure everything looks good under those stairs there's a couple couplings that those the stairs slide into we want to make sure those are set nice everything's cleaned up around them so when we broom over it you know it looks really nice right there but that's the basic process guys pouring setting up pouring and finishing around a pool it's uh it's quite a job there's a lot lot to know a lot to know to get it done right and this is how you do it right here thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next one <laughs>